Top ten hut. Good job, men. We've taken the beach, but the hard part has only just begun. For you're about to embark on the great crusade toward which we've striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, we will bring about the destruction of the German war machine. The elimination of Nazi tyranny over oppressed people. What the hell is that? Oh yes, sir! Oh shit, look! It's my loot box! What? My loot box! I got like, uh, pistol grips! I got fucking experience, boy! No what one gives a shit! Step back in line. Uh, uh, sorry, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Now, as I was saying, the destruction of Nazi tyranny. Where are those coming from? Soldier, get back in line. Soldier, what is going on? Welp, another year, another Call of Duty. Only here she goes back to her roots. Gone are the jetpacks that mimic Titanfall. Gone are the futuristic guns and mech suits. Nope, what we got here is good old fashioned boots on the ground gameplay. That brings back the intense, visceral boots on the ground gameplay our fans love. You know, this is a boots on the ground experience. Uh, so fans are very excited to sort of see how it feels. Yeah, we're, we're how back did you do to that? Boots on the Ground, man. It's awesome. Going back to Boots on the Ground. Then just go back to Boots on the Ground. Boots on the Ground! They've said it a million times in marketing. But does this game truly deliver? Let's find out. Where's my boots? Hey! I thought this game was Boots on the Ground. There's no boots at all. Jokes aside, I've always seen Call of Duty as a sort of scripted linear war game, just reskin for a time period. And personally, I would play it for the story campaign, as the multiplayer has always to me been devoid of any real world tactics and just mostly unsatisfying. But apparently, I'm in the minority, as this year's Call of Duty has been a resounding success, as this time it's made over $500 million in its opening weekend. Nearly double the sales of the last Infinite Warfare, and it's got a bigger opening than Thor Ragnarok and Wonder Woman's opening weekends combined. And I must admit, I was having a lot of fun initially with the story. Let's go, 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 go! Get me on this beach, goddammit! Go, 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 go! DJ! My gun! I need a gun! I lost my fucking gun! Take the Bangalore and get to the seawall! Get some goddamn armor on the beach! Man, I've been saving Private Ryan's flashbacks. Oh, fuck! Daniels, this is what you trained for! Now pick up that banger! There we go! F you, gentlemen! F you fucking Nazi bitches! I'll kill every single one! Daniels, this way! Stop! I are wildly like that. Don't jump Private Moore's down! Private sales down! Jump! Get the <laughs> cut! <laughs> the game has a great opening level. The D-Day throwing back to Medal of Honor, beach landings of old, and, and then clearing out a resistance a few miles inland. That was pretty fun. Oh, Fuck, let's go! Go! Give me some fucking hell! That wound looks bad. Here, take this. Thank you. Thanks, bud. I love, uh, I love it so far. This is a great opening level. Fantastic opening level. 
However, as the game wore on, it started to drag a little, jumping all around, uh, feeling disconnected, failing to develop its characters in meaningful ways. You're clearly supposed to care about characters when they're in danger, but you just don't. You ready? Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you try to hustle a hustler. Now. Oh my god, he cut off his hand. You get flushed. Oh, ILO had enough fight in him for two men. Josh Duhamel adds nothing to his role other than his recognizable transformer face, which they do a pretty amazing job of recreating. Briefing's about to start. What the hell are you boys doing? Then there's so. Hey man, that looks a good. Real sweetheart. Well, you think you're special, huh? Damn. The crowds are gonna eat your lunch. Now, not our lunch, Sergeant. Our lunch is secure. Watch your lips, Usman. But he's certainly not a viable antagonist like Kevin Spacey was, which now kind of seems even more creepy with recent events. Like at any moment he's like gonna grab your ass now. Son, I want to offer you a second chance. Science, this is a great soldier. It's a sad day indeed when the military has no use for good men like you. Well, a glass would be a star. <laughs> How did he... There's an old military saying. You treat your men like you would your own beloved sons and they'll follow you into the deepest valley. The deepest valley. So Justin Mel's character goes around being an asshole and butting heads with the lieutenant on how to do things and just generally being a shitty person to you and your squad. It's not very compelling stuff. And this is what the main game's focus is on the entire time. Worse is when the battle situations you end up in after the initial two levels, things just go crazy, okay? The repeated story beats they do in every Call of Duty, no matter wh what or how ridiculous it is for the era, pop up unwelcome. The ridiculous driving section just makes you laugh. Just like it was in World War II. Ramps built for the fucking jeeps. That's so nice of the Germans to do. Oh yeah. There's Gimon driving in this fucking section. Gotta tick those boxes off. Oh, could have ran that guy. Oh, there's a fucking panzer. It's like, you know, the jaws. Fucking. I know some of you guys are still impressed by these. I mean, I, I can kind of be too, but after so many times playing through these overblown, linear, scripted, hyper bullshit, narrow miss over and over scenes, it starts to get old and borderlines on parody. I am so sick of your overblown bullshit. <laughs> Every time things start to get interesting, it's ruined by the restrictive nature of the game. Even simple stuff. If you weren't going down this narrow corridor, the game wanted you to go down, then fuck you! If you're trying to destroy a machine gun nest, you aren't supposed to destroy, fuck you! Maybe there's some drop I gotta compensate for. You ready? What the fuck? Did you see it? Did you s 
Was that my eyes playing tricks on me? Or did the rocker go like this? <laughs> did you see it? You see? Did you see? <laughs> Call of Duty! Call of fucking duty, man! Fucking real warfare, my ass. Fucking bullshit. I got a what's the point in giving me a fucking bazooka? Give me a fucking defective bazooka. <laughs> and as the game turned on, I realized that these Call of Dutyism slowly started creeping back in. Or rather, they had always been there from the very beginning. Worst among them is when you realize that all you really have to do is push forward to set off the next trigger to push the level forward, rather than actually pick off the enemy, okay? In most cases. With that illusion broken, the rest of the game was this. Push forward, set off the next cutscene trigger, and all the Germans just suddenly retreat, even if they were kicking your fucking ass. Rinse and repeat. Ah, oh, damn it. Pushing up. Get after them! Come on, they're on the run! Keep pushing! Yeah, you just gotta push. It's just a series of mission triggers. I'm taking this way too serious. That sucks to see sort of the mechanics behind the game. The scripted events and shit. I guess they do that so you have plenty of time to hunt for some of the most pathetic collectibles I have ever seen in a game with historical significance. That, that's it, I can't look at it. A small civilian pocket watch engraving on back. This civilian timepiece is an important status symbol and provides a direct benefit in the daily lives of both the shopkeeper and the farmer. Th thank you for telling me what a pocket watch is. Um, it's great. That is a, that's a great collectible. Good job. Great job. But hey, they do allow you to commit war crimes, so I guess that's pretty cool, right? Alright. I, I had let the grenade go. I, I had already let it go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And there are these little heroic moments clearly inspired by saving Private Ryan and, and like kicking enemies off your allies. Ah. Oh shit. Can I, can I take that back? Or by dragging them to safety, but sometimes they don't work so well when your guy can only move in one direction. Hell, there's even the famous night scene from the movie. Uh, what is this? I'll put the F and then put the F. Whoa. Ah, uh, saving Private Ryan. It's basically saving Private Ryan. Ah. <laughs> and the tank scene. That's the Tom Hanks moment. I was waiting for them to ape that. But despite ripping off that classic, they just couldn't capture any of the meaningful emotion or care for your team like so many other World War games have actually done effectively in the past. There's many examples of it, and it doesn't do it here. And at least the game's difficulties work well, sort of. Uh, regular is hilariously easy with brain-dead AI. To 
the ridiculous Harden where every shot that's shot at you is, is on point and through the tiny little pixel spaces. It every every little gun battle turns into a, a sniper battle. Oh no! Pressure on a Zussman move up. Oh you fucking bitch! No! No! Why am I standing in the fucking windowsill for more than half a second? Why what the fuck? Thankfully, veteran feels just the right amount of engaging challenge. Unfortunately, even that is ruined by a terrible checkpoint system that can sometimes trap you in unwinnable situations. Ah! Ah! The dog in my bed. Ah! Get off my dog! Ah! Please let there be a checkpoint. No checkpoint! No checkpoint! But even then, I actually enjoyed the challenge of getting out of these unwinnable situations while going crazy. Well, if you want to journey to hell with me, let us go! Let's fucking go to hell! Ah! What? What is shooting me? All three of them are dead. There's nothing that can shoot me! This game cheats! I'm here! I'm here, kill me! I'm here! So, yeah, the campaign average, I guess, overall. And as for the multiplayer, I do want to thank Activision for using dedicated servers on PC. I think, though sometimes I suspect it's a hybrid system, because something's going on here. I mean, that's big though, and it needs to be talked about because we asked for it, and it's kind of here. But perhaps it doesn't ring true because there's been a lot of launch issues, servers up and down, empty areas. It hasn't exactly been a very smooth launch. However, it's mostly ironed out by this time. And as for this gameplay multiplayer, well, it's, it's got your standard modes and the, and the thing acts like a Call of Duty game, just reskinned with World War II, to be honest. The maps, to me, feel ridiculously small. Perhaps Sledgehammer did this to help lessen the blow from going from futuristic weapons to World War II combat. Uh, so we're, you're, now you're not jump jetting everywhere around, but they still wanted to keep that insane chicken with its head cut off Call of Duty pace, so they had to like make it small. Why not just make this like it should be a little slower, a little more tactical, and longer time to kills? It'd be all right. I think they're ready for it. Oh shit, there was a beach part to this? I missed the best part. Angry. Call of Duty, man. Call of fucking duty. Call of Duty just, it desperately needs some innovation. I was hoping we'd get that here. And, well, do we? That all depends on your definition of innovation. Uh, we really only see two new major additions, both to multiplayer. War mode, which has you pushing back and forth over certain objectives and it rips it straight from Battlefield's rush mode. And it ends up being Call of Duty's best game mode. <laughs> Somebody needs to be on the get a fucking sniper. Get up here, Joe, with me. I need a fucking sniper to fucking defend me in this fucking position. Fuck! Yo, that felt that was a fun mode, but it's it felt like it was developed in 2010. You know what I mean? Like too little, too late for Call of Duty. And then the other one is this new. Headquarters social space where you walk around and just grab various dailies, weeklies, challenges, emote to each other. But that's ripped off directly from Destiny's Tower. It's almost embarrassing that Call of Duty doesn't seem to have an original bone left in its body. I mean, unless you count uh, freaking 
arcade games on apparently mobile consoles in the middle of the battlefield for R&R as original. Or one-on-one -on -one training exercise. It's kind of fun distraction, better than the freeform soccer from Destiny, but, and it even has leaderboards. I'm on the board! <coughs> yeah! World War II. But no, the real innovation Call of Duty bothers with is the most insulting kind. A new manipulative social loot box system. Kill somebody. See if it lands on them. Damn it! <laughs> Legendary. It's exactly what happened when my grandpa was on the front lines. <laughs> the thing just flew down and the fucking cards flew out of the fucking box and everybody was like, Ooh, you got a fucking grip. Oh, you got another grip that looked just like your grip from the previous one. Fuck it. Thank you for looking at my loot drop. Oh, five minutes! Whoa! I got five minutes of experience, Joe! I like the penguin. <laughs> That's where you're going with this shit? For fuck's sake! To, to hell with this. To, I, I, I can't. Good for you! Is that you the game? Now you have to look at my shit. Epic! Do I have boobs? Whoa, I got boobs! World War II! It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so they fixed a bunch of the SMG domination from the beta. Your, your best guns are by far the bar and the FG-42. Using these two, I turn from a crap player near the, near the bottom of the match to the top of the match, okay? And, uh, it's just, it's funny that the AI does these hilarious call-outs, giving away my position and getting me killed in the middle of a multiplayer battle. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I do like the idea behind it, the battle chatter. It's pretty cool. There's one in the open! Hey, don't call out my fucking position. <laughs> he bled out. Oh, no, he didn't! <laughs> boy, that boy... <laughs> How many bullets... Reload the fucking gun! <laughs> God damn! Also done all right is the score streaks, which there are plenty of to choose from here, which fit the theme, surprisingly. A lot more and a lot more uh, appropriate than I expected. I, I personally like the fire bombs and the turret guns the best. Here's what I need to do is I need to get back up. What the? Oh, shit. <laughs> there ain't no getting back from that. <laughs> You're dead, son. That guy's Help him. Help Jesus him. fucking Christ! <laughs> but make sure to use the ribbon that lets you keep your points so that you, you know, if you're not using that ribbon that carries over the points, you're likely not going to get to mess around with these much, which kind of sucks. But uh, there's customization for your guns and soldiers. They even throw historical accuracy right out the fucking window and, and put women on the, on the actual front lines of battle. Outside of the French resistance fighters and the British special forces, which yes, actually happened. There were women in combat, but I don't recall there ever being black female German soldiers as Nazis slaughtering GIs in World War II. Maybe I missed the memo on that. I, I don't know. Honestly, I got, got bored with the multiplayer relatively quickly uh, outside of war mode, especially on its nine maps, relatively small ones. And no Activision fucking supply drops aren't gonna keep me coming back. Try something actually innovative and cool next time. But I, I can, it feels like a, just a reskin. 
we're going back ten we're going back five, six years. But then we're adding nothing new to the formula except for the headquarters, which is a Destiny ripoff, the war mode, which is a Battlefield 1 ripoff. When I heard divisions and social spaces, I was like, oh, right, Call of Duty. We're d yeah. There's like a, a, a like an overhead overall map of, of like Europe and and everybody would be in a certain division and they would they would fight and and push each other back and forth and 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 you would unlock uh, specials uh, every week uh, contributing to weekly to something that would be like a tank push or something that's not that's not what happened that's not what happened that's angry <laughs> My friends usually get excited to play the zombies mode. This is true. And this game has it and it's frantic as ever. It could be really fun with your buddies, but you know, this time around I, I couldn't convince any of them to buy the damn game three or four times amongst us all so we can play. I, so I had to play with myself, with randos, which is considerably less fun. And there's nothing really big new here. I mean, they obviously just Found a way to jam in those fucking loot boxes for this mode too. I'm gonna pass. Hey Joe, you wanna play a zombie game? No! no I don't way. wanna fucking play a zombie game. I'm tired of fucking zombies. <laughs> so it, it pretty much wraps it up by going back to World War II. This aging lion has managed to stave off death for a while longer and retain its crown, surprisingly. It's got an okay campaign, but it fails to really impact you by its end. Oh, this is actually done a little bit better than, than Battlefield. Yee! Whoa, my fancy flying! Oh, no fucking way. You can't maneuver like that. What's going on? <laughs> okay. It's scripted a little bit. I got you. Okay, look, it's it's doing this all by itself. I'm not maneuvering. When you zoom in, it kind of gives you a little bit of a cinematic thing. Yeah, um, I mean, it's fun. That's what matters, but to then see the fucking wizard behind the, uh, the curtain there kind of Approaching the target sucks. area. Give those heavies some room. And finally, Sledgehammer adds it's all right zombies mode. That's fun with friends, but it's also starting to wear out its welcome, at least with me. I, it's zombies, you know, it's nothing to write home about. So the final verdict for Call of Duty World War II would have been six out of 10, slightly above average. I like the return to World War II. Take his gun. Halftime, woo. All right, man, you're doing good. You're doing good. Just keep up the pace. On fait mon fouet, mais fais mal, là. On se déflague, on se déflague, on se déflague, on se déflague, on I like that. I like the little fucking last thing of a jig. Sure, Call of Duty World War II has been a success for Activision at so far $500 million and counting, but it's still not quite at the numbers it once used to do. Black Ops 2 made that number $500 million in one day. So we haven't quite reached the glory days of Call of Duty again. And without real innovation, I'm not sure they'll ever reach that area again. How come that gobbledygook looks just like uh, dang nabbit. I mean, seriously? I mean, seriously? There's this one kid in chat that was just like, really, another Call of Duty hater? Like, what, do, what does Call of Duty have to do? Not the same fucking thing over again. Like, defend this. No, oh, oh no. You want, do you want dang nabbit? Or do you want gobbledygook? Which one's better for you? Sledgehammer, Infinity Ward, whatever developer house in Activision, please, please innovate for the next Call of Duty, okay? Otherwise, people are still gonna buy this shit. i to be honest. I'll see you guys on the next Hangry Joe Show.
No, 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 not, not above your head. <laughs> you want to hold it like this, and then... <laughs> you're not going to hurt me. As long as you don't hit me in the face with it, you're not going to hurt me. All right. Ready? You hit test. Wait. Perfect. See, that was better. <laughs> and then I would react to... <laughs> oh, Mr. Hostage, just wait. I'm going to... I'm gonna tear this child's ice shirt. Head. He's gonna rip it. He's gonna rip it. I'm gonna tear this I'm gonna OJ's little tiny baby shirt in half. Soldier, you're disobeying a direct order. Get back in line. What the hell is going on? You me in the face. Good. <laughs> that was the perfect take. We got it. Oh, what?